Happy Earth Day! My name is Kelly. I'm a naturalist at Brexville Nature Center and we're here today to talk a little bit about invasive plants and invasive species in general. So what is an invasive species? There are plants and animals, even fungus, that are brought in from different areas and introduced. They aren't native and they can really make a bad dent in the environment. We're going to talk a little bit about one plant in particular called garlic mustard. So I'm going to hand it over to Pam to tell you a little bit about that. Hi, my name is Pam Taylor. I'm a naturalist with Brexville Nature Center. Um, as Kelly said, we're here to talk about invasive species and specifically garlic mustard. Garlic mustard is a huge problem in Cleveland Metro Parks. It's throughout every one of our reservations, throughout all of Ohio, even in your backyard. So this is something that you can help eradicate or get rid of in your backyard. So we wanted to show you what it looks like today. Here you'll see we have some large plants. These are second year growth plants. So you can see they're already over a foot tall. They'll get up to two feet tall. These currently just have flower buds on them. They will open up and have a four petaled white flower. The base of the stem is easy to identify. It's purple in color. Um, so even when you find a smaller first year one, digging down underneath the leaves, when you see that purple stem, you know that you're at the right plant. Why is garlic mustard such a bad thing? Well, it's toxic to our environment. The plants actually will deposit hundreds to thousands of seeds that are viable for at least five years, potentially up to 10 years. That means that the seeds can stay in the soil, can be turned up and brought to the surface and can sprout 10 years later or five years later. They also will send out toxins into the soil, change the chemical balance of the soil, and they'll outcompete our native plants that we want here that are important hosts for butterfly caterpillars, important food sources for different animals, including deer, uh, rabbits, and other animals that will travel through our reservations and our parks. This is a cut leaf toothwort here. It's actually the host plant for the West Virginia white butterfly. The butterfly will lay its eggs on this plant um, and the caterpillars will consume it during their growth. Because the garlic mustard will outcompete this one, will change the soil and make this plant not grow in our forest habitat, it reduces the opportunity for this butterfly to have places to lay its eggs. If the butterflies lay their eggs on the garlic mustard instead, that plant is actually toxic to the caterpillars. Other plants that are outcompeted can include things like trout lilies. All of our early spring wildflowers face the challenges of competing for nutrients and a good healthy soil. Garlic mustard is actually really easy to remove, especially if we've had a recent rain. You do want to be careful when you remove it though and actually pull down at the base of the plant and wiggle out the root structure. You want to try to remove the entire root. It has a tap root that hangs down in there, but you want to try to remove the entire root structure. Um, any fragment left behind, it can re-sprout from. And even if you want to tamp the soil back down, uh, if there are seeds in the soil, then it might, might help kind of hold them down so that way they don't have a chance to, to sprout or to germinate. As you pull them, you'll want to collect them all. And you don't want to just drop them back down where you were. You actually want to put them into a bag and then tie the bag up and the bag will need to go into the trash. Uh, you don't want to compost this one because again, all parts of it, the roots, or if there happen to be some seed heads on it, can go ahead and sprout in your compost or wherever you're going to use your compost mix. Uh, in Cleveland Metro Parks, we use groups of volunteers from Boy Scout groups to adult groups people of all ages. A really important thing is to make sure that you don't pull it and then lay it on our trails for us. Although we appreciate the effort, uh, leaving the plant on the trail allows it to be tracked through my hiking shoes, through your hiking shoes, through your dog, through a horse, through anyone traveling the trails. Uh, they risk transporting the seeds or even fragments of the roots. As we mentioned earlier, invasives can be all kinds of different species. So there are several different things you can do to help stop the spread of invasives, including buying local plants. Make sure you clean your gear and clothing when you travel to a new area. Also things that we don't really think of as being very harmful. Um, dumping fish bait is a huge problem with the spread of invasive earthworms. So there are many different things that we can do which can help to solve some of these problems.